Coming up on Network Africa. Soldiers fired gunshots and blocked roads in Cote d'Ivoire. And the police in South Africa arrest a 27-year-old man in connection with the death of his 22-year-old girlfriend. Plus, a book launched in Kenya showcases a view often unappreciated by the world. It's great to have you on the program. I am VC Adebayo. We begin today in Cote d'Ivoire, where soldiers have fired shots in the plateau district of the main city, Abidjan. Reports say the soldiers are unhappy that soldiers who mutinied at the start of the year have agreed to drop their demands for further payments from the government. There's also been gunfire in Kogo, in the north of the country, and earlier there were reports of gunfire in the country's second city, Boake. In January, mutineers took control of Boaké over their pay and treatment, but a spokesman for the group apologized to President Alassane Ouattara at a televised ceremony in Abidjan yesterday, signaling an end to the protest. The mutineers mainly demobilized former rebels, forced the government into paying bonuses of about $8,000 each that had been due to receive further payments this month. Now, there's been an outpouring of anger and grief in South Africa after the police arrested a 27-year-old man in connection with the death of his 22-year-old girlfriend, Karabo Mukena, who was reported missing two weeks ago. Her body was found burnt beyond recognition yesterday. A grieving and outraged women have taken to social media to share their stories of abuse at the hands of their partners. The hashtag, men are trash has also been trending on Twitter overnight, with mostly women calling for an end to violence against them. Well, let's get more on this story from our South African Bureau Chief, Betty Dibia, who joins us live from Johannesburg. Welcome to the program, Betty. Thank you, BC. Now, what more can you tell us about the case of Karabo Mukena? Well, uh, we understand that uh, the young lady, 22 years old, uh, she, was, she went missing on the 28th of April and her body was found by the police about a day or two later. Um, but the, the, the police didn't actually know it was the same person who on social media friends had uh, sent out a picture uh, saying uh, that she's missing. But the young man who later on, because the evidence, well, he's still a suspect, but uh, video footage viewed by some family members as well as the police uh, showed him, showed her arriving at his place in Santon and never leaving. But he left at a point to bring a, a big, um, here it's called the pick it up uh, container, it's, it's a bin. Uh, quite big, uh, uh, an average sized person can fit into that, arriving back at his, his home and living with it. So probably he stuffed the body uh, of, of the young lady inside there and went off to, uh, according to the family members and the police, uh, burnt the body, buried in a shallow grave. And it was the information that he gave that uh, helped the police to, to find him. And today he was charged with a premeditated murder, as well as uh, defeating the ends of justice. He appeared uh, at the Johannesburg Magistrate Court today. Well, now, just like you mentioned that he appeared in court, but do you have any idea of when, what punishment is likely to be meted out on him? Well, murder in South Africa uh, attracts a, a life sentence. But uh, the judge, as we saw in the case of Oscar Pistorius, and, and a recent one which was uh, decided, I think, this week, uh, where the, 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 the judge can deviate from that. The one that was... Uh, uh, that, that was completed a few days back. Another young lady, 24 years old, uh, killed by her boyfriend in 2015, and uh, one of the ANC youth leaders, I think in KwaZulu Natal or so, uh, he got 20 years. Um, so it, it depends. It, it, it traditionally attracts life sentence, but the judge is allowed to, to you know, the, uh, 
um, discretion of the judge. The, the judge can deviate from that. Well, well, I don't. Has anyone did anyone say that Karabo at some point maybe mentioned that she was being harassed by this boyfriend of hers before this tragedy occurred? Well, there's a lot of hearsay going on. We understand that she, at a point, uh, uh, went to the police to open a case of, of assault against the boyfriend. But asking some, the police, another police officer there, another police officer said it was actually the young man who opened a case of assault against a girlfriend. We don't know if it's the same lady or not. So nobody knows what is actually uh, the truth in this case, whether she was the one who opened the case or it was the young man. That is not yet clear. I can't confirm that. But we, we have people saying a lot of things that she uh, opened a case of assaults, but there's no confirmation uh, you know, regarding that. Well, thanks a lot, Betty, for the updates coming there. Betty is Channel TV South Africa Bureau Chief. Well, staying with the stories relating to this, a study done by the World Health Organization in 2002 shows that 60,000 women and children are victims of domestic violence in South Africa. However, it's hard to gather accurate statistical data in South Africa because domestic violence is rarely reported in the country. An article in the conversation, Africa Journal, says violence against women is firmly entrenched in South Africa and it does not appear to be changing. Rather, violence has become an accepted way to assert and reassert masculinity and dominance. Well, this comes despite the country having some of the most progressive legislation in Africa.